Well, hey there, everybody. Uh, today, I'm working on a thermocouple vacuum gauge. Uh, I need a vacuum gauge to uh, tell me the pressure inside the vacuum manifold when processing neon tubes. Uh, this one happens to be a 100 micron. This is a um, Hastings or Teledyne Hastings Radist, uh, just kind of Hastings for short, uh, model VT5B. Um, this particular one seems to be about, I would guess, uh, probably looks maybe 40 years old. Looks kind of 70s to me. This VBC on the front is just a rebadged uh, logo. And uh, these uh, current prices for these uh, Hastings gauges, the, the VT5 series, uh, in a cabinet like this is about $900, and the gauge tubes, uh, are the DV5 gauge tubes, are about $140. Uh, so I decided before dropping a, over a thousand dollars, I thought I'd snag a, a used one and see what I could do with it. Uh, I got this gauge, uh, forty bucks shipped, and that uh, gauge tube, which is the sensor, for forty as well. So I'll need that. That's a new old stock one. I'll need a gauge tube, no matter what. And if this, if I can't get this working, uh, I'll only be out forty bucks. But it'll be a fun experiment. We'll take it apart and take a look inside. It has a couple capacitors um, on the circuitry of the gauge. And of course, capacitors go bad after a while. They start leaking. And these, if they are indeed about 40 some years old, they should just be replaced. So I'm going to open this up and uh, we'll desolder them, find out what kind they are and order some replacements. See if we can't get this thing work. It does still work, um, but the uh, I, I'm uh, quite <laughs> the dubious about the accuracy, shall we say. So uh, we'll give it a little refresh here, a refurbish it, and see if we can't get it to working like new. All right, and uh, before I uh, dig into the uh, cabinet there, I'll uh, explain a little bit how this uh, this vacuum gauge works. Uh, the sensor part is called a vacuum gauge tube. It hooks up to the vacuum uh, manifold system. Uh, it has eight pins on the back, uh, three of which are connected to wires. The other five are just kind of dummies. Uh, and these three wires inside the vacuum gauge tube are uh, configured somewhat like this. Um, two wires called uh, hot junctions run AC power back and forth to uh, to heat the wire. This other wire here is called a cold junction, does not have current fed through it, uh, and it just run, is at ambient temperature. Now, the differential between these two wires uh, creates a, a DC current, and that goes out to the, the gauge, uh, and then the, as the DC current will be measured on the, uh, by the needle. Now inside the uh, gauge tube there are lots of little air molecules bouncing around uh, and as they bump into this wire they take a little bit of heat with them. Uh, as the vacuum system draws uh, the gas molecules out there are fewer and fewer inside the gauge tube and the system uh, and so there are fewer molecules bumping into the wire and the wire gets hotter uh, as the wire gets hotter, it creates more DC current and it moves the needle. So uh, it's pretty simple, but uh, that's uh, a bit how it works. So let's uh, let's dig on into it here. Almost forgot to show you how it, uh, that it actually does work. This um, the way this this uh, works is when you turn it on. Uh, well, the needle's bouncing right now because I just moved it. But uh, when you turn it on, nothing actually happens because there's no gauge tube connected. Uh, it's it's looking for that DC current, uh, and since this uh, gauge tube is not connected, there is no DC current. But when I hook it up, it 
We'll turn it on and give it a second. It starts running AC current through the wire. And if you watch that needle, it starts moving a little bit. Now it's not going to move a whole lot because it's just going to the ATM. We're just at atmospheric pressure right now because this, this gauge tube is not under vacuum at all. So right now the needle's pointing right to ATM, which is where it should be. So we'll uh, take this case off and I'll show you the inside. Uh, open this case up. All we gotta do is remove two screws. One on either side. One. And two. Not much to it. Here we have a little better view inside. Um, we got uh, over here. We got the those are the three wires coming in from the uh, the gauge tube connection. You can actually see them in there. One, two, three. And then the, these three wires, hot, neutral, and ground from the grounded power plug. Uh, and then we just got the circuitry on the gauge there. You can see our yellow capacitor right there is starting to leak. So that definitely needs to be replaced. And that blue one down there will be replaced as well. So uh, what I got to do is, you can see and there's some nuts there. I've had to. Get that circuit board off the. Uh, there we go. Get that off the meter, the gauge, and uh, desolder the the capacitors. So get that out of there. All right, to get this front panel off, just pop out these four screws. Access to the circuit board. I don't know if you can see it, but we got some labels on those uh, capacitors as well, so that will be helpful when uh, tracking down replacements. Let me get a socket for those. Three eighths. One, and two, and the circuit board is free. So, I'm just going to move this out of the way, Tad. We will need to desolder that joint, that joint, and then there and there. Okay, I uh, decided to do it the easy way, and uh, I'm just gonna, since the wires are sticking out of the ends here, I'm just going to snip them off and. Uh, Desolder the little feet from the board. So we got the positive end on that side. I don't know if you can see that, the little plus signs. All right, 
crusty. And not clip the wire next to it. There you go. Anyway, I'll uh, look these up and buy some replacements and probably wash this. The gimbal just died. Thank you, technology. <laughs> we'll hand hold it for the rest of the... Anyway, and I'll probably wash this white crap off my hands because who knows if it's uh, carcinogenic or whatever. But uh, yeah, I'll bring it back when I got the replacements and we'll uh, put them in. All right, well, it's about two weeks later. Uh, I found these uh, replacement capacitors uh, and I chose extra slow economy shipping so I wouldn't pay more for the shipping than I did for the capacitors. I got an exact replacement Sprague Atom TVA 1703, whoop, five microfarad, 450, uh, volts DC. Unfortunately, this one, new one, is about a quarter inch longer than the old one, so uh, that may prove to be interesting, I mean, putting that in. And then uh, this little guy got a, um, this was a 20 microfarad at 12 volt DC, see there? Um, couldn't find that, so I got, went, uh, went up to 16 volt DC. But, uh, Take that back apart. I put it back together so I just wouldn't lose any parts. And then I uh, also cleaned up the face. You can probably see how shiny the glass is. Ooh, pretty. All right, uh, we'll get to it. All right, well, I'm not a professional solderer, so you can watch me attempt this live. Maybe I shouldn't have had so much coffee. solder. You can put in the comments below about how I'm doing it wrong. Uh, okay, well, All right, well, they're in there. Who knows if I did it right? <laughs> I guess we'll uh, reassemble and put it, uh, put some power to it, see what happens. Uh, I found out that these, you can see that these are actually part of the circuit. They connect uh, to the, the gauge itself, these uh, grommet holes, so. That's part of the, I found that interesting. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, reassemble and see what happens. All right, so I got you positioned um, pretty much straight on uh, with the uh, camera sensor here. Uh, so we have as little parallax as possible so you can see what the needle's doing. Uh, I have not tried to turn it on. So who, we'll, we'll take bets who thinks it's gonna explode. <laughs> Uh, all right, ready? I uh, don't have the gauge tube uh, uh, plugged in, so nothing should really happen to the needle. So let's see what happens, except just, you know, the light turn on. That's about it. Uh, okay. We got the light on, so nothing happened so far. I'll put the gauge tube on and uh, see what happens here. gauge tube is connected and uh, we should see the needle move down towards ATM as the uh, thermal couple warms up there it goes I did not mess with the potentiometer at all inside uh, I just changed the uh, capacitors out so I did mess with this uh, needle adjustment 
when I got the meter so this should be right at atmospheric pressure with the thermocouple warmed up since it's not under vacuum at all. So, right about there. Now all I gotta do is get my vacuum equipment set up and uh, hook it up and see what happens. All right, well anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll put a link below to the, uh, the va uh, vacuum setup video if you wanna take a look at that. And uh, hit subscribe for more Neon related videos. We'll see you next time.